In the early 1990s, researchers from Brown University found evidence that pointed to teenagers having biologically different circadian rhythms than the pre-adolescent and adult populations. This delay in sleep-wake patterns was later coined the sleep phase delay. This change causes adolescents to exhibit a night owl chronotype, more commonly known as the natural sleep preference, to go to sleep late and wake up later in the day. During the past decade, there has been a growing amount of scientific evidence demonstrating that adequate sleep duration is crucial for adolescent health, well-being, and academic performance. Based on these findings, in 1997, seven high schools in the Minneapolis Public School District shifted their school start times from 7.15 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. Findings from the 1 hour 35 minute delay in the district indicated positive results for the student population, which included improved attendance and enrollment rates, fewer students sleeping in class, less student reported depression, fewer student visits to school counselors for behavioral and peer issues, and a more even temperament at home. And perhaps, the most important finding was that the students, rather than staying up late in response to having more time to sleep in the morning, used the extra time in the morning for actual sleep. What do you say to critics that would say, well, if school starts later, kids are just gonna stay up later? The research shows that they do stay up slightly later, but they more than make up for it with the additional sleep that they're able to gain. Since then, there has been encouragement from the American Medical Association, the Start Schools Later movement, researchers, and educators working towards starting hours that allow students to get enough rest. It's time that we think about the schedule that we're putting our children on as one lever of change, one way we can improve the life of kids and hopefully our education outcomes. As stated by Mary Karskiden, PhD of Brown University, Given that the primary focus of education is to maximize human potential, then a new task before us is to ensure that the conditions in which learning takes place addresses the very biology of our learners. So, if adolescents are biologically predisposed to sleep later at night and wake up later in the day than children and adults, why do schools still start so early? At its core, modern school starting times have developed based on parental work times. In the 19th century, public education was developed as a means to provide child support for the growing working and middle class, who, unlike the elite, could not afford to send their children off to boarding schools. Due to the need to fill factories with able-bodied adults from dawn to dusk, providing parents with the time to work free of their children was essential for the economy. There was nothing natural or biological about school starting times, and it wasn't based on an agricultural past where we were more in tune with nature. Because of this, the asynchrony between school start times and the adolescent circadian rhythm can lead to an accumulation of sleep debt in students. But of course, instituting a change as large as a delay in school times isn't a straightforward process. Several complications that are regularly brought up when it comes to changing school times are Changes would involve the monetary cost of changing transportation times, schedule disruptions for families, teachers, school administrators, and school staff, how it would disrupt student athletic and extracurricular activities, and how students with part-time jobs could potentially be affected by this change. All of the arguments against it are adult-based arguments. Concerns about drop-off time, moving bus schedules, change. Change never comes easy. However, with sufficient strategizing and preparations, there is evidence that school boards have been able to delay school start times at acceptable cost with minor disruptions to the community. Those who oppose the change often cite that there's a lack of evidence that shows that later school times improve academic performance. But, just as Kayla Wallstorm notes in her article, Changing Times, there are other equally important measures of impact, such as students' physical and emotional well-being, benefits associated with teaching learning, and improved family relationships. Years ago, we used to start high school and middle school later. Through urban sprawl and the hustle and bustle of modern society, it changed to meet the demands of adults, not kids. For the health and overall well-being of adolescents, it's vital that future policy decisions that are being made takes the biology of the group it serves into account. <laughs>